Hey everybody, hey design friends, this is Cindy Allen, Editor-in-Chief of Interior Design. Today is a very special day. One of our most respected American manufacturing companies, a recognized global leader in kitchen and bath, oh yes, Kohler, will take over Design TV today. Oh yes, with two hours of in-depth interviews, new product launches, and of course, design. And there is no better way to kick this off and what an honor it is to chat with the president and CEO, fourth generation in this American dynasty and my good friend, David Kohler. Hi, David. Hey, Cindy, thanks so much. This is a great opportunity. We're super excited to be here and uh, thanks for kicking it off with me. Oh yeah, you and I together. We're, we're always kicking <laughs> things off together, that's for exactly. sure. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. We're very excited to be here. First of all, how are you guys doing? Listen, you know, COVID has changed everything, changed the world. We've had to pivot, right? We started this design TV channel like almost immediately. Um, can you share how all of this has impacted Kohler and how you've been adapting? Yeah, we, we really can. It's been a tremendous experience, I, I must say. As challenging as it's been, we've really found new muscle, new strengths. And, and we created this ethos from the beginning when the crisis hit. Um, about Kohler Strong and how do we come out of this stronger, smarter, faster as a company? And if you actually look at the Chinese translation for crisis, it's danger and opportunity. And, and we thought about it that way. How do we get stronger, but how do we come out better at the other end of this? And it's been, uh, it's been a difficult journey, certainly. Uh, some of our colleagues in, in China faced it first as that economy went down, as the pandemic hit China first, and then it went to Europe, and then eventually to the United States. But we learned so much along the way, which was amazing, uh, from our teams in these markets who faced it early on, and how they, they took control of their business, they protected their associates, protected our customers and supply chains, and persevered through it. And uh, of, of course, the the safety and, and health of our associates as well as our customers and trade partners was of paramount concern. So we spent a lot of time initially making sure our operations were resilient. We had to shut down some in different parts of the world for periods of time. And then in other parts of the world, we were, were deemed an essential business and we were able to operate throughout this period. Uh, so it's really been interesting learning how to do business in a virtual way as all businesses have. Uh, but we've done really well. We've been very proud of how our teams have come together uh, with our customers building actually stronger relationships is just like this communication. You can find ways to communicate different and even better in a more intimate way more frequently uh, with your important customers through this type of situation. So by and large, it's, it's been very interesting in, in, in finding new muscle. Our China business has come back very well. It had the first dip, but has come back in a V-shaped recovery. Uh, the U.S. has been very resilient throughout this, I would say, in terms of new construction, remodeling. The activity has continued uh, to be very strong. There are some pockets of commercial activity that we think will weaken in the future as the pipeline drives up. But by and large, the, the U.S. market has been uh, very strong. And then other markets around the world are still in lockdown, like India is just coming out of that. But overall, we've been very impressed. Our, our largest businesses here in the United States and China and kitchen and bath and power generation have been extremely resilient. While some of our others uh, have been more impacted. Our hospitality uh, business here in Destination Kohler has been heavily impacted, obviously having to shut down, but it's now starting to reopen. And so we're, uh, we're pretty optimistic, albeit uh, we're still not out of it yet. Obviously, we're watching the science here in the United States and in Mexico and really the Americas because I think we're further behind the, the rest of the world in containing the pandemic. So we have to be very cautious and careful as we navigate forward and, and, and build more resilience in our business. You know, I heard from, I heard from designers, um, uh, designers in Germany who were doing a lot of work in China. And so they said they were completely prepared in a way that many of us weren't. And as you said, yeah. all your partners over there. So I, I imagine that you, you did really know what was happening uh, quite a bit before everybody else. Yeah, there's this uh, there's this whole concept uh, recently.
recently called the gray rhino. And, and it's something you see coming at you, but you fail to respond to it. And honestly, as, as much as we saw this coming, sitting here in the U.S. from China and from Europe, I think the U.S. wasn't fully prepared for the consequences of this, to be honest. And, uh, but our teams in Korea and, and China really led by example. And they've shown us what discipline testing, tracing, isolation, self-distancing can do to protect the society and protect the economy. And, and we've certainly tried to take that to heart in our operation and business where we've taken it very seriously from the beginning. And uh, I think it saved us uh, significantly in terms of uh, having to shut down less than other businesses as well as the health and safety of our associates. But as I said, you know, we're not out of this. There is no uh, norm, you know, we're not going back to a, a normal way of being for a long time, uh, certainly for the next 18 months. And so we all have to be pretty diligent in managing through this. I, I love, I, I do love what you said. And I want everyone to hear out there because I believe in it too. I always say this, like every threat is a hidden opportunity yeah. and we have to keep remembering that so we can get on the other side. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, as it's been said throughout this pandemic, this has accelerated pre-existing trends, whether it's the streaming trend, the online trend, e-commerce trend, uh, services trend, all of these things have been accelerated and will continue to. So we have to pivot and adapt as, as a business and as a society to them. Yeah, yeah. So, um, David, we are kind of living in a dual crisis right now because obviously the pandemic is the first. Um, how is the company responding to the Black Lives Matter movement? And, and how are you addressing these social injustices? You know, it's been an uh, incredible time of kind of pain, um, sadness, reflection, yeah. and, and learning for all of us. And uh, as, as much as terrible about the events that happened to George Floyd and around the country, uh, it was this wake up that the United States and the, and the world needed, unfortunately, to really recognize the, the depth of the systemic issues that still exist in this country that haven't been dealt with that are causing uh, this type of racial injustice. So um, again, I think you know, trying to find the good in something that's very bad um, is going to be a difference maker for our company and for this society. I truly believe there'll be more traction, inertia, momentum going forward for real change uh, than we've seen in this country since the 1960s. So what we're doing as a, as a company is reflecting, learning uh, about our own issues inside Kohler because we have to make sure that our practices and way of being are, are doing the right things to manage uh, race and people of color within Kohler Company. And then we're also trying to understand what do we have to do, what can we do to make a positive impact on our communities and at the national le level against specific issues that are causing and perpetuating racial inequality uh, in the United States. So we wanna use Kohler Company as a force for positive change, just like our stance on sustainability. Uh, how can we be a, a, a positive organization for change in society? And so in that sense, it's energized us. We're turning it into a real turning point and a positive turning point. And there's so much energy in our company around this. As you know, in, in broader uh, industry and society, there's so much energy of people wanting to do the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing this at the grassroots level throughout the company, and we're creating a lot of change already, reaching out to historically black colleges and university, working with trade associations uh, that have been built around people of color, and figuring out all the things that we can do business-wise, philanthropic-wise, working with suppliers, uh, owned by minorities. What are all the things we can do as a company to be a force for good? So in that sense, I think it's been very positive. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear. And you know, you're a leader and and people will follow. So taking those kind of actions is, is amazing. And I can't wait to continue to talk about that together. Um, okay, so I want to get to the history of Kohler. So I, I just want to tell everybody out there about 
five years ago, we worked together on a conference and it was called the Kohler Design Affair. And um, Kohler brought designers in from all around the world and we had a few days together. We've done it three times now, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to actually seeing you and giving you a hug yeah. in real time. But, um, but you know, when the designers come to Kohler and have a chance to really see the culture, uh, you also teach them a lot about the history of Kohler. So most people wouldn't know that it's 147 years old. Unbelievable. Um, we're only coming up to our 90th, and I feel like that's pretty significant. But also that you guys started in the farm equipment business or something like that. So <laughs> <laughs> give us like a Cliff Notes version yeah, of just some a of the highlights note. of the history of Kohler. As you said, we're 147 years old. The, the company was founded by my great grandfather. He grew up in Austria. He was uh, the the youngest of, of 15 children, and all of the children went into farming uh, except him. Uh, he was lucky to immigrate to the United States when with his father when he was a young man. He grew up on a farm in Minnesota, but he decided to go to university in Chicago. And uh, after university, he became a traveling salesman selling furniture north of Chicago, up into our area in Wisconsin. He fell in love with a, a young lady uh, who lived in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and her father owned a cast iron foundry. So he was able, after they got married, to buy into the cast iron foundry, and they made farm implements, all sorts of things. Uh, but one day, uh, in, in really out of panic and necessity, because the U.S., in the uh, 1880s was, was in a bit of a financial crisis. So he had to be creative. He took a horse trough hog skull, or he furnished it with four feet, enameled it, and created our first bathtub. Oh and that's, yeah, that's what got us into the plumbing business. And then uh, just like we, we continue to do today, that entrepreneurial spirit of innovation and growth, he started creating more and more household products out of cast iron, from water closets, to sinks, to lavatories. We even made an electric sink, a forerunner to uh, a dishwasher at one point, wow. but all sorts of things. And then expanded uh, over time into brass for faucets, into ceramics, and all the materials to build products for the home in, in the plumbing category. And that's that's the germ of, of, of how we got started uh, as an organization. No, that's so amazing. I mean, when you go to Kohler, there's, there's a small museum that has some of the old pieces and the designers go crazy looking at that, yeah. right? Yeah, we, we go crazy too, yeah. because we look back at some of the great designs throughout history uh, in the 20s and 30s and, and, and we're saying, my goodness, I mean, just that, the level of design then, and that really speaks to what we're most passionate about, just like the audience here today. I mean, we, we're passionate about design and and creating beautiful things and the creative process. And that's what we enjoy most. And you can see that thread throughout the history of our company. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is when you think about 147 years old is that you did a lot in times of crisis. Like you move forward in times of crisis. So yeah. I, I imagine maybe the word resilience would be yeah. a good word to describe uh, how you can yeah. move forward. Yeah, you, you know, you're exactly right. And in times like this, you reflect on that. Um, it's the perseverance, the tenacity, the belief in what you're doing, and that just sheer will and humility to get through it. And uh, our company has been through 18 recessions, two oh. depressions, the recent uh, global financial crisis, and then this pandemic and recession. Um, we've been through it all, and in this combination of, of strong principles, values, and this tenacity, uh, this is what sees us through, and, and we'll come out of this again stronger, actually, than we went into it. No, it's amazing. Okay, so I want to talk about um, sustainability. So this is what I thought we'd do. I know that Kohler has a long history um, mm -hmm with your sustainable efforts. So I thought maybe I could name some of the programs and you could talk about yeah, them. Okay. Sure. All right, so number one, the net zero goal. Yeah, so uh, it, around 2007 and eight, we looked around the world and uh, just felt that we were, you know, the world was ignoring climate change too much. And we've always been an environmental steward, but we felt that we had to do more. And we wanted to create 
a, a positive approach to sustainability that just wasn't about doing less bad. It was also about innovation. And so we created a, a you know, a big, hairy, audacious goal at the time. How do we drive down our environmental footprint aggressively uh, through the future and with an ambitious goal of net zero by 2035, uh, with an interim objective of, of reducing that environmental footprint 3% every year? And it's been an amazing um, effort ever since. If you look at our water consumption, if you look at solid waste, if you look at greenhouse gas, we've steadily reduced those in significant measure every year since. So it's really been a, a turning point for us to make a more aggressive statement and then drive that through action. We've never been about greenwashing or, or using our sustainability strategy as publicity it's about, it's an internal strategy, we want to lead by example and show other companies that this idea that you, you can't be a, a capitalist or a successful business and be an environmentalist and, and care passionately about the environment, you can't be both of those is wrong. You have to be both of those. You have to create a, a business without compromise that can be a successful business, but some, a business that does no harm to the environment and ideally over time is a, a net positive contributor to the environment. And that's our ID, idea going forward is positive by design. How do we make sure that every product we create and design actually has a positive impact on the environment going forward? I love that positive by design, that's amazing. I don't, don't you think because you're a global company, I mean, you know, folks in the States that are specifying you in the States, they do think of, Kohler is being American, but being a global company is a completely different story. And, and you kind of understand that kind of social impact in a much deeper way, don't you think? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it gets back to diversity. Just, you know, diversity on a, on a team makes such a difference and yeah. diversity of business around the world. So being exposed to our second largest market in the world, which is China, one of our most strategic markets in the world, which is Africa. Uh, our business across Europe, uh, pioneering a new business uh, across Sub-Sahara Africa and Latin America. All of these cultures, experiences, business people coming together and really influencing and help shaping our point of view on the world, on societal issues, as well as design ideas that can design appropriately for these markets. So it, it really has made us a better company having this, this global perspective uh, as a business. No, it's amazing. Okay, I wanna talk about, because I'm very excited, we even we published something recently on the Waste Lab. This is such yeah. a fantastic story. Yeah, so the, the Waste Lab was a, you know, a great story. Um, I, again, it started by one of our creative associates internally who raised their hand and said, you know, w why don't we do something with this waste? Obviously, we want to minimize waste, but we're going to create industrial waste. So let's create beautiful things, beautiful products for sale out of the waste. So thus, the waste lab was born. And we took, you know, foundry waste, ceramic waste. We brought it together and made beautiful tiles that we're marketing under the ANSAX brand now, which has just been incredible to see, you know, the designs and the style that we could create with waste. We're actually creating three-dimensional objects now out of waste and extending into other materials. And it's just the beginning of this creative exploration is, you know, what, what can't we do uh, trying to reuse positively uh, our industrial waste streams while we also work, work to minimize and, and eliminate them. Yeah, well, first of all, the tile is glorious. It's gorgeous. The color is so dense and gorgeous. But um, also the narrative behind it, obviously, obviously it's a good story. But designers really attach themselves to meaning um, these right. days. So it's a positive, it's a positive all around. Okay, yeah. another uh, program uh, designed for the environment. Yeah, so when we think about, um, you know, net positive or... or you know, positive by design, we think about, well, how do you do that? You have to bring DFE or design for environment thinking into your product development process. And that goes down to environmental product declarations, understanding all of the ingredients and elements that go into your product, 
it goes down to the level of understanding all of the process inputs and the energy inputs in your process. So, and then truly the lifetime value and, and use and impact of your product. So DFE brings that all together, uh, including the end of life consideration. And we look at all of that together as we assess every new product uh, for design for the environment to understand if it really is gonna have a positive impact going forward on the environment. Hmm. I mean, you were talking about how you don't always honk your own horn. So um, I remember a conversation that I had um, earlier, which was that the DNA of Kohler was really about water. And then through marketing and ad campaigns, it became the bold look of Kohler. And now we're coming back to how important water is, right? Which is really, it's inherent. You are water. Kohler is water. Um, so let's talk about some of the uh, safe water projects. Yeah, so we, uh, we, we believe passionately about water and, and safe water for all is a, is a concept that we're, you know, driving in our business. And, and our work with water has so many different dimensions. You know, first and foremost, we want to make uh, amazing products that can conserve water but deliver excellent consumer experiences and, and performance. And that's really where technology comes into play when you look at water closets and bringing down the water consumption dramatically, but delivering more and better performance or with shower heads that don't compromise satisfaction in a great shower, but can use dramatically less water. So that first and foremost, we wanna make sure we're driving water conservation in our core business, in all of the products and technology that we're delivering. And every one of them is looking at that as a major consideration and criteria in their development. But beyond that, we have to, again, use our organization as a force for change and positive. Uh, so we're doing safe water for all projects in different markets around the world, in India and in our Jagadia facility, working with the community to refurbish schools and put in proper sanitation, as well as water conserving products in those environments, as well as driving education and awareness around the world. So we've done uh, run for clarity. So we've done some things around the world in terms of runs uh, around this issue of water, uh, hearkening to the fact that women in, in different markets around the world have to carry water long distances. So we, we emulate that and we name the run uh, after a, a simple water filtration device called Clarity that we developed for different markets around the world that didn't have access to safe drinking water. So there's a lot of dimensions to, to the work around water. Uh, many of them are born out of uh, uh, an area we call innovation for good. How do we use the best capabilities um, and technology we have as a company uh, to make a positive impact on the most significant issues facing our society. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Now, I love that you always uh, say leading by design um, and sort of part and parcel of that is the arts. And I'm not sure that everyone knows how deeply committed to the arts Kohler is. I know there's an artist's industry and residency program, which I want to talk about, and the John Michael Kohler Arts Center. Talk to us about that. Right. So, you know, the, the arts and the importance of, of the arts have kind of been in our, our DNA from the beginning. In, yeah. in the 20s, uh, my great uncle, Walter Kohler, noted a quote from John Ruskin, the, the famous English philosopher, life without labor is guilt, labor without art is brutality. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to our culture, a care for art a care for design, but a strong work ethic as an organization as well. Uh, we founded the, uh, the Art Center, the John Michael Kohler Art Center was founded in 1967. It was named after the founder. And today, and it was run by uh, my aunt, who still oversees it. And today it's uh, got one of the world's foremost collections of art by self-taught artists anywhere in the world. This amazing art center we've recently just uh, commissioned and built and completed a, a, an art storage uh, facility for all of these collections in addition to the art center so that is truly special uh, in our community here 
And then uh, arts and industry has been a program that we started in the 70s. My father and my aunt started that program, bringing in artists into our factories to use our materials, create amazing art that they could take and exhibit and, and sell. And it got so many of these artists more notoriety and helped them really uh, underpin and, and, and escalate their careers. Over, the time, over those years, we've had over 600 artists in that program. So it's really been uh, a neat program and, and we're so proud of, of all of the art that it's created and the artists that it's helped. And then we also have artist editions. Uh, we took that idea and created a line within our product lines uh, called artist editions where we do different explorations with, with color, texture, decals, and now recently into new materials with our nature's chemistry uh, product lines. No, amazing. By the way, I have this great story. So um, I don't know if you know this, but one of one of the gals who used to work for us, Yasmin Spiro, she moved to Chicago and she's she is an artist. So she works for the IIDA and yeah. she was in the, the art art and art and residency program. She said it first of all, it was life changing for her. Wow. Uh, really, she, she said that, you know, there are other kind of residency programs where you're given space or you're given a stipend and then you're let loose. But she said she felt she learned so much. She felt the care of the people around her. She was telling me like, there's this guy, Jeff, who's in charge yeah. of blazes. Yeah. He taught her so much about blazes. So there's real artists who work for Kohler. And then she was telling me this guy, Bob would say like, okay, Yasmin, there's time on the, there's time on the yeah. kiln. So like she could, yeah. put up, you know, like she said it was just the most yeah. wonderful experience and that's the coolest dimension is our our factory associates working <laughs> hand in hand with the artists and it's a neat experience for everybody to work in that type of environment yeah i love it i love to hear that right straight from the designer's mouth so congratulations on that um so let's talk about uh i know that i know how much you believe in design but also in keeping up with trends and technology yeah so you know we love you know, all things about design and, 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 and product development. I said, you know, what do we enjoy the most is the creative process. And, uh, and, and we enjoy creating things that are beautiful that might be considered, you know, more aesthetic design from, from high art to, to high technology and everything in between. And, and that's one of the most interesting things about our company is the strength that we've created across so many different product areas, material areas, as well as the, the technical capability that's been built over the years from how to work with ceramics of, of all type to now advanced electronics that if you look in some of our uh, highest end intelligent toilets or digital thermostatic valves for electronic uh, shower products, I mean, these products are, are very, very sophisticated, but the combination of being able to bring this all together, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright's got a, a, a great definition of design, form and function in perfect harmony with nature. I think that really sums it all up. How do you bring all of this together to create a beautiful form with amazing function, functionality that can deliver an incredible consumer experience? and and that's what's neat about our sandbox is because we have access to this all creative ideas, materials, capabilities, and then also technology. So really the sky's the limit and, and we need your audience to continue to feed ideas and, and needs that they see because it just helps fuel our creative juices to, to uh, attack new product development. Uh, you know what, you know, you know, the other thing that's kind of crazy these days, and I know you'll appreciate it, is that I don't think in my entire career, I've ever heard the word hygiene the way I have <laughs> right now. Yeah. And I mean, it's obviously yeah. what's, you know, what everyone's worried about. But that's also like something as a leader that does the design community actually never had to worry about. You did that had to yeah. be hygienic first and foremost. We jumped way ahead of that and we're worried about design and obviously function. But now with, with that word being so in everybody's mindset, um, it's kind of interesting, right? 
Yeah. So sometimes you're just in the right place. And, and uh, you know, we happen to be in the right place. But it, it really has been incredible, the intensity of, of focus on that. And, and we uh, have this idea that drives us, you know, cold or clean. And we've seen this dramatic spike in hygiene products. So bidet seats, all of our hygiene seats are, are spiking globally. But here in the U.S., where that category has been a smaller category historically, intelligent toilets have been on an incredible run globally and have accelerated here in the United States in, in all types of projects. On the uh, residential faucet side, kitchen faucets, bathroom faucets, touchless faucets, everybody understanding the value and utility of touchless faucets. And then obviously the commercial environments. Yeah. Everybody who's, you know, building and designing commercial environments wants them to be as hygienic, clean, touchless as possible. So for us as designers and product developers, this has been an incredible boom for technology. Again, that's kind of been accelerated in terms of its trend and growth. So it really has been fascinating to watch and, and we were in the right place to capitalize on it. Yeah, I would say that. Um, yeah, that was in your wheelhouse um, has, you know, so that was in some weird way, like a positive that you've always been really, really interested on the technology mm -hmm. side. Yeah, no, it's been, uh, it's been really interesting. And obviously, that's going to inform our strategy going forward significantly, because these, these trends aren't going to go away. This desire for hygiene and convenience, residentially as well as commercially is going to is, is here to stay and is only going to continue to grow so looking at all forms of technology around that is critically important exactly now i know they're all your babies but is there <laughs> a new favorite oh product uh designed recently yeah. that you can like share we want to know david's favorite yeah you know cindy <laughs> they're all children yeah i know <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I think just I was thinking about this because I knew you were going to ask me this this morning when I was taking a shower. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I started, you know, looking around uh, our bathroom. Our house is a, is a, is a French country uh, design in the woods. And, but the bathroom, which we recently remodeled because we want to continue to use more products, right. um, is, is more contemporary uh, in nature. And it's uh, but it's it's beautiful. It uses all of uh, ANSAC's tile and stone and surfaces and, and a wide variety um, because we think that's essential to kind of create the, the warmth and beauty uh, and, and the natural feel in an environment. Uh, we have a full wall of, of Roburn mirrored cabinets uh, that give you a lot of design flexibility. I have a TV in my mirrored cabinet. It's all wired for, for Bluetooth sound. But the storage is amazing, actually, on two walls of these mirrored cabinets, front and back, uh, is, is great. And then uh, my wife and I are both super passionate about Callista. And so we have Callista faucets uh, with stone inlay handles um, on our, on our uh, vanities. Oh, that's nice. Which are Roburn vanities. So we have the highly functional aluminum Roburn vanities, uh, which are amazing. And then, you know, in the uh, we each have our own toilet rooms, which is important for any marriage, as you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, there, of course, we, we have uh, our latest intelligent toilet. So we have we each have a veil, a Kohler veil intelligent toilet. Uh, and love those, um, you know, great functionality. And, and uh, you know, and then we have a, you know, a large dressing area uh, that, that uses kind of uh, Italian closet design, kind of a simple, clean leather aesthetic. And, and that's really, you know, that's a space we've spent a lot of time together, obviously, as you're getting ready at the beginning of the day and end of day. And, and, and that's, that's where we live. I think we were talking about the intelligent toilet, how that's going to become more of a necessity as yeah. opposed to something on the higher end. Yeah, no, it's, uh, and that's uh, certainly something we, we think a lot about and we have some very long range plans yeah. uh, around that. Uh, but the technology opportunity is significant, uh, we think, uh, for health, 
uh, wellness, hygiene, and uh, you're going to be seeing more and more from us in that space going forward. And, and we've been a, a leader in that area. We've got a great technical team globally. Uh, we do our own manufacturing all the way through all the electronics, through all the vitreous China. And uh, it's, uh, it's really amazing. And, and, and the cleanliness and the hygiene around that uh, are truly, once you use them, and I say the same is true with hygiene seats, you know, once you use a bidet seat or a hygiene seat, uh, you don't want to go back. So I really encourage, you know, everyone to try them, specify them, use them, get to know them. Uh, because they're they're amazing products because it's all about the experience and it's a very easy to use you don't have to even touch a keypad they're all uh, very intuitive today and touchless today now just um, as we're starting to close I mean you're a global company so you are used to using technology to stay together but as the you know the folks in Kohler Wisconsin are used to being together so how are you how are you guys adapting as a company you know, it, it really has been incredible. Uh, you know, like all companies, we've had to go virtual. We're also, relative to relationships with our trade customers, uh, we're also using the technology to have, as, as other company, virtual happy hours, touch bases and things. And we'll be launching Studio Kohler soon, later this year in September, which is a whole digital platform for our designers, architects, trade customers, to, it's kind of a world of Kohler with tools to make it easier to maintain that relationship and specify and do work uh, together. And, and so we're excited about that launch in September. Yeah, I think we're going to talk about that later in the show. Right. Uh, so yeah, so, that, so, that's, so that's great. So, okay. First of all, you have to send my love to your dad, to Herb. I will. Yeah. And uh, anything, I mean, we've talked about a lot of things and so much positivity. Uh, how, how do you see how do you see the future, David, and, and how do you see Kohler? Well, I think you have to be positive about the future. There are going to be challenges, and we're in the midst of challenges right now. Um, and we have to not ignore the challenges. Uh, you know, we we have to be honest and embrace them and help people. I, I believe strongly that those of us that have been blessed with more. Uh, more capability, more strength, resources. We have to help others uh, that haven't been that fortunate. And I think uh, I, I would say that's critically important as businesses and individuals. I also think the world continues to need our services. It needs great design. And, and everybody on this uh, call today, um, the world needs inspiration. Uh, they need design. They need inspiration. They need improvement and impact. And, and that's what we do in our work. And uh, most problems in the world can be solved through thoughtful, better design persistence. And uh, I would just encourage us all to, to keep focused on that. And, and we'll make a difference in, in our work and our craft over time. Thank you, David. Okay, so so designers out there, okay, I know you're going crazy to, crazy over David. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so awesome. thank you. No, seriously, David. I know that when we have the when we have the conference, everyone's like, oh my God, David Kohler. Like there's so there's so much to share. So I really want to sincerely thank you uh, for giving us so much uh, this morning and kicking off this amazing day to get together. I, I wrote down what you said about um, Frank Lloyd Wright, which I think is perfect, that form and function in perfect harmony. He would love that you said that, and we agree with Kohler about that. So um, sending you lots of love and uh -huh. virtual hugs, and um, can't wait to see you in real life someday. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cindy. Big hugs. You're, you're one of our biggest fans, and we appreciate it so much. Thanks for all that you do. We really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you. So, okay. Uh, bye, everybody. Stay tuned for All Day with Kohler on the Kohler Takeover. Thank you.